Chapter 61 Who is Suffering? Questioner I visited a teacher once. He talked about the pain body to describe personal pain and collective pain. He said that all our emotional pain is collected and stored and as a result it has almost become a kind of entity like a ball of pain that you carry around with you. He went on to say that the only way to stop this pain from damaging us is to live fully in the present because now the now has a lot of power. Maharaj This is all body knowledge Imagination. You are not the body. The body by itself has no power, so how can there be an entity of a pain body? It sounds like someone has created a little monster to frighten you. Whose pain? Whose pain body? Whose now? You are unborn. This is a long dream. There is no past and there is no future. There is no present and no now. All power is in you. As my Sadhguru Nizagadatta Maharaj messaged, except for your selfless self, there is no God, no Brahman, no Atman, no Paramatman, no Master. Second questioner. But, Maharaj, I seem to move from one problem to another, physical or emotional. It brings suffering. Maharaj. Problems grow because we give so much importance to the body. This is body knowledge, just like when you face problems in a dream and then after waking up, the problems have gone. The saints always face their problems with courage. Because of their strong conviction, they did not concern themselves so much with their problems, even when they faced serious losses, illness and unexpected tra tragedies. Consider the tragic story of Saint Yaneshwar. His mother and father threw themselves into the Ganges, and left the children destitute, all because the father had become a sannyasin and then, contrary to Brahmin law, had returned to his family. According to you, I have committed the fault, so why are you punishing my children? The father stated that he himself should be punished, but he begged that his children should not be. The Brahmins ignored his pleas. And so the parents threw themselves into the sacred river in the hope that the children would fare better and be looked after. There were four small children, three brothers and one sister. The orthodox religious masters would not allow the four children to beg. People had a lot of hatred in those days. They suffered a lot and asked humbly, please help. The orphan children were ignored by their relatives, treated as outcasts. Nobody helped them, and so they took to travelling to various places looking for a place that would welcome, accommodate them. At some places they were met by the orthodox religious leaders who would not accept them. Yaneshwar approached the learned Brahmins to try and clear the family name. God is everywhere, in each and every heart, he proclaimed. The Brahmins asked him to prove this and said, OK, make this buffalo recite the Vedas. As soon as Yaneshwar placed his hand on the animal's head, it started singing the Vedas, as good as the Brahmins. A big crowd gathered to listen to and witness this miracle. The people were so surprised with the power he had that they bowed down. The orthodox priests were forced to accept the greatness and super, supernatural power of Yaneshwar. This story shows the importance of struggle. If you listen to the source of your knowledge with complete faith, there will be spontaneous arising of your indwelling power. 
Be determined like Yaneshwar. Now you have maturity, knowledge, reality. So don't keep coming back downstairs to the body level. Use the body like an instrument, like a middleman. You have a body and therefore you're going to have physical, mental, spiritual problems. Everybody thinks his problem is the greatest. But if you look at the big picture, there's always someone who's suffering more than ourselves. View your problems as a test of your spiritual life. Bring that knowledge into practice. Don't give undue importance to problems which come and go just like clouds. Unbearable things become bearable with established truth. You have good knowledge, but it is not put into practice, and that is the real problem. The finder is missing. You have a lot of assets, but you're not using them, and because of a lack of planning, it is not giving you a result. You have to use the property, the asset, and with good planning, you will enjoy the benefits. Questioner. You said body knowledge should be dissolved totally, Maharaj. Spontaneously. Questioner. Maharaj, I wanted to tell you that I had experience of I am that. I am everything. Maharaj. That's very good because this kind of spiritual experience is a progressive step. I'm not saying it is ultimate truth, but it is a progressive step and therefore encouraging. Experiences are projected from your presence. When the experiencer and the experiences dissolve, there you are. It will happen spontaneously and then you will have the conviction that you are nothing to do with the world. Then you will know that whatever happens in the illusory world, whether good or bad, has nothing to do with you. The seer remains aloof from all that is seen. If I say that I am Brahman, it is the seer's reflection. The seer's existence in the world is spontaneous, shapeless. Questioner. As long as there is body knowledge, it is impossible to understand my spontaneous presence. Maharaj, the seer is one. Dreams are different. Are you taking ego from all these dreams? No, you just forget about them. Forget this dream also. What you see is the seer's projection, reflection. Not anything good or bad. You're still viewing yourself as separate from reality. When you accept reality spontaneously, you will be able to face any problem with courage. In human life, there is no escape from problems. How you handle them is up to you. People are undergoing devotion, reading books, but not doing any self-inquiry. The problems you are describing are what you have seen. You're ignoring the seer. Without the seer, you can't see the scene. We have created these concepts, and then we're trying to live within the circle of these concepts. You can talk about swimming, but you cannot swim. Maharaj, questioner, Maharaj, I realised that I was reading for 20 years and then suddenly I stopped. I suddenly realised I did not know why I was reading. Maharaj, you do need to know how all this book knowledge is helping you, otherwise it is a pointless exercise. When you know the reality, you will undergo a complete inner change. If you are aggressive, you will become calm and quiet. 
you can review the changes so that you know where you stand. Nizagadatta Maharaj says, I am making you masters, not disciples. That the masterly essence is already in you. That masterly essence is already in you.